for nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados and Digicel, Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctors Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctors Hospital, always there for you. Call 949 6066. But I do have some questions. There are more questions than for most listeners participation program talk today, talk today what is on your mind k man if you are ready to talk we are ready to listen here's, here's your, host, your host sterling, sterling dwayne, dwayne ebanks, ebanks. Hey, welcome, and thanks for joining us on another wonderful Wednesday's edition of Talk Today as we invite you to be a part of the discussion and get a chance to invite and ensure that we are prepared for the National Day of Prayer. And at 1 o'clock, as we speak about social workers, well, we invite you to be a part of it at 2 p.m. You know, they say give flowers, you know, while they can appreciate it. So we'll tell you about the upcoming Auckland show at 2. Stay tuned for Talk Today. Avoid any statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use indecent language or make any statement that is false or misleading. Call 1 800 534 8255 949 6990 949 8037 or WhatsApp us on 925 3261. Email talk today at candw.ky. Let your voice be heard. And now, back to Sterling Dwayne Ebanks, Radio K-Man Talk Today. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. And uh, you say, to whom much is given, much is required. Maybe that's why they don't ask much of many, because you know, we don't have too much. But maybe we have more than we realize. Pastor Andrew Ebanks, how are you, my friend? I'm doing very well, my friend. How about yourself? Oh, listen, even if I wasn't doing great, I have said that I am, because call those things that aren't as if they were yeah. I know I will be but I'm doing great man fantastic uh, fantastic you hopefully are enjoying you know, a bounty of blessings oh yeah you know I, I was talking to somebody just today I, I say most things are well maybe not everything is good but 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 most things you know and, and yeah. it don't make sense to complain you know it's one thing to to have uh, you know, hopeful expectations there's another to be purposeful in a prayer and then there is an unwillingness to stand in the gap, even though we say we should. There's an unwillingness to take up the mantle mm. and to, without you know, it being a pun, to, to, to preach, you know, but to lead by example. Mm. Uh, I, I, I say that perhaps in, in a different vein in a, in a second, but only from the perspective of are we prepared to be responsible and accountable, and are we prepared as we look in the mirror to reflect pensively, but to also appreciate you know, or where we go straight. Pastor Ethel Morris, how are you? Good to see you. It is good to see you too. Yeah, well, I am doing well. <clears throat> you know, I think we are, in all respects, doing a lot better than we understand and acknowledge as Pastor Andrew was sharing. But <laughs> sometimes, you know, is it the ungrateful heart or is it the avarice that guides us? Or whether we're a preacher, politician, or, or otherwise. What, what do you think, Pastor Morris? Well, it's it's imperative, as you mentioned earlier, that we should lead by example. Uh -huh. You know, so whatever we do for a nation mm -hmm. is very important, representing Christ. Mm. Yeah, in other words, bringing Christ to the nations. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you respectfully, just pretend that this was an ice cream cone, grab that microphone, bring that closer to you. What is it? Just chuck it close to you, man. Just put it so. <laughs> <laughs> is that better, Miss Susan? Uh, thank you. I should, you know. See, you were told, you know, Pastor Andrew, he had a booming voice, so put the mic further away. <laughs> she said, no, make the man come closer. <laughs> and it's that closeness, I think, that we are, unfortunately, have become a conditioned in the last couple of years. You know, stupid words, and you chastise me publicly, Pastor Andrew. I say stupid phrases like social distancing have caused us now to be not only physically absent, mm -hmm. but mentally distracted. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to love and honor. We need to embrace and yeah. fellowship. And yet we don't. Mm. We, we, we don't. And in my friends who are psychiatrists and psychologists remind us that it's the human psyche to fellowship. Yeah. However yeah. you phrase that. Mm. But we're not enough. So we got a chance coming up, I'm told. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. With the National Day of Prayer. You know, and, and you're right. Uh, mm. 
we we have a tendency to shy away from each other and uh-huh. you know uh, as we were talking about before these cell phones <laughs> and things they're, they're fantastic tools but but they do a lot to to cause us to social distance outside of the the other yeah. things that maybe make us social distance but yeah. the national day of prayer is is a good opportunity for us to get together and celebrate and give god thanks for his many blessings on our lives and and and, and we definitely want to take that opportunity to to get together and and, and pray uh, but to just be in fellowship, like you said. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a fantastic conversation just earlier. And, and uh, coming from a family, as you know, where there's strong women. And it's not only because we celebrate women this month, but a, a mother who I recognize in her, you know, as she approached her ninth decade of life. Or, I don't know, but she's ending her ninth decade of life. Mm. Six to seven to eight, and then nine decades. You, you start to understand that level of independence that people have. Yeah. Uh, women of that era, uh, they they made things happen because it had to happen. Mm. And now to see as you, as Bob Marley said, the once a man and twice a child, you start to understand how important it is to draw alongside. Yeah. And, and uh, another fantastic, independent, intellectually gifted lady who was allowing me to be in her company as she shared from her expertise. Mm. And she said, you know, if you, something that was shared with her, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I, 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 we know the scripture, you know, God, um, well, you know, man sort of makes his step, but God, you know, makes his plan, God orders his steps. Yeah. And yet, are we, are we listening? Mm. Are we hearing? Are mm. we purposefully seeking? Yeah. Pastor Morris, what, what do you think? My, my thing on that, you know, is that it is so important for us to mm train ourselves to listen. Mm. You know, a lot of folks hear, <laughs> but they do not listen. Yeah. And so mm. it's imperative. Can I ask something? And, and only because I, on a personal level, in the last almost 20 months now, almost, I, I very consciously, not fully appreciate and recognize that I, something I did, I did not use the word I. Mm. I didn't even say me. It was always we. Friends would say, but this is the royal we. Because a coach had said in a very, very early formative part of my life, there's no I in team. Yeah. You and I have had conversations, and I already said I. Mm-hmm. But I said, so wait a minute. How can I not be the individual who stands in the gap and be that one who is accountable and responsible? We can't hide behind you know, your mama frog tail. You can't hide in in the audience and pretend, you know, just to throw eggs but don't want to, you know, smell, you know, the stink <laughs> of the rotten egg. Mm-hmm. You have to be that eye mm-hmm. that is like the eye beam that holds the structure, the eye that is like the father who stands mm-hmm. before his children. Mm-hmm. Oh, with that in mind, are we now in the Cayman context, mm-hmm. recognizing the fellowship, recognizing the uh, many different nationalities and the mix, and across the congregations, are we at risk of being divided, or can we use the I and be united? Yeah, uh, y- you know, unity is 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 not something that happens by chance. No, it's something that that we have to strive for. Yeah. Um. And and here's the reality mm-hmm. is that we have to make up our mind from the beginning before anything else happens mm-hmm. that we're going to be united. If we wait until something happens and say, no, no, now yeah. we need to be united, we're going to be divided. Right. Uh, and so it's 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 one of those situations where uh, you, you want to make up your mind beforehand. Hey, you know what? We're, we're going to be united. We recognize that there's going to be situations that arise where we might have to forgive each yeah. other, where we might have to move past some differences and some difficulties. But... Mm-hmm. We, we decide up front, hey, let's be united regardless of. Yes, sir. And so it's kind of like the, the marriage vows, right? You, <laughs> uh, you, you stand on, a, on your wedding day and you say, through sickness and health, through rich or poor, through better or worse, till death do us part. Is that what it says? <laughs> I'm convinced that it says, listen, you get sick on your own, and if you don't have money gone, <laughs> yeah. and it's till one of us kill the other. Yeah. Yeah, that's not what it is. No, no, no not I, at all. I only joke and just so love. And unity, if I'm hearing you, has to be a conscious effort. Absolutely. So, so Pastor Wise. It has to be intentional. Yeah, intentional. So with that, with, with, with the Cayman context, and the only because we're seeing what is transpiring globally, uh, there is seemingly 
this almost expectation that no longer that thing we did of uh, the, the cultural and the conscious ethos of praying publicly, mm-hmm. of s- assemble in a restaurant and we say our, our grace, not not you know in, in a way to draw attention, but in a sense of gratitude for the, that food which we eat. Mm-hmm. Are we not at risk in the Cayman that we don't fellowship publicly because it's politically incorrect? We don't fellowship publicly unless we are you know, of this congregation or of mm. this particular sp- persuasion or whatever it is. Yeah. And we no longer see the the likeness we're seeing, how we're more di- you know, different. Pastor Morris? I I think that, again, we will have to be intentional uh-huh. in making sure that we create that kind of uh, avenue. Uh-huh. So we don't have that distance, especially between the religious bodies. Yeah. Uh, we we should try, endeavor to create mm-hmm. that kind of a scene, presence mm-hmm. where individuals are free to come and have fellowship. I I I believe that because of the working situation, mm-hmm. the hours. A lot of folks who probably would want to have the fellowship at a particular time right. are not able to do so because of work. The demands on earth. Yeah. The demands. Yeah. So so if, if if we can sit together mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. a body and structure, remove the labels and structure something so that yeah. we can come together mm-hmm. and pray openly yeah involving everyone, yeah. then that would be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Do not forsake, you know, assembly the assembly ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. After the, the break, let's talk about that because as I was thinking about today's discussion, I think we live in an interesting time in human history. I believe that we live in one of the best places mm. if we continue to consciously find ways to come together and not let the super a sort of a position of uh, a particular mindset or practice mm-hmm. now take root if it goes against something that could l- otherwise cause us to be you know less than united mm-hmm. let's talk about the national day of prayer you know where and when and the fact that it is open is about relationship not religion it's about fellowship and prayer and thanksgiving and you know seeking as opposed to dictating directing and hopefully demanding all right when we come back we can chat about that all right yeah. to our listeners please join us after the break from boat days to beach gatherings leave the catering to subway choose from small and large sandwich platters double meat wrap platters and top it off with With optional optional cookie cookie platters platters for dessert dessert. or ask about our subway box Box to go go. with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich one One cookie cookie and and one one bag bag of of chips. chips for all occasions and celebrations. Let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone call 949-6066 find your dream car with a cayman national vehicle loan enjoy 100 percent financing up to eight year repayment and a seven percent fixed interest rate for the first five years for eco-friendly cars we'll waive your commitment fee this only applies to new vehicles call 949-8300 or email lending at caymannational.com today You don't sound too good there, Bobo. Yeah, you know how it is. With the kids back in school, <coughs> every other week they come in out with something, and then I catch it. <coughs> sound like it catch you, but for real, brother, flu season is here, and COVID is still around. 
you gotta stock up on things like medicine, vitamins, and minerals for you and the kids. You know what they say, prevention is better than cure. At ValuMed, our pharmacists can help manage flu symptoms and provide guidance on vitamins and minerals to best support you and your family's overall health. Visit ValuMed Pharmacy on Walker's Road or Bodentown, or WhatsApp your questions and prescription refills to ValuMed on Walker's Road at 926-1662, or WhatsApp ValuMed in Bodentown at 916-5511. Live happy, live healthy with ValuMed Pharmacy. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I go in flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. The Business Buzz. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. Brought to you by Cayman Insurance Center. Celebrating 45 years in the Cayman Islands. Specializing in property, life, and other lines of insurance products and services. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks very much for joining us, and thanks to Pastor Andrew and Pastor Morris for joining us. Let me ask, um, as we invite you to share with us, you know, the National Day of Prayer, initially, why is such a thing important, and especially in today, I mean, we got an app for that, you know. <laughs> 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 hopefully, <quite this. laughs> it hopefully remains merciful to me, yeah, but yeah. why? why is that important, I mean? The Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes. Mm. And, you know, Cayman is still a Christian nation. We, we recognize we have people here mm. from, from lots of different other places in the world. But, mm. but, but that's our identity from, from our roots, from our foundation. We, we were a Christian nation. We still are to this day. Um, and it's important. We see what happens in other parts of the world when they start taking prayer out of the schools and all these other things. And, um, you know, the reality is is that uh, uh, we have the freedom to still be able to gather and pray, and we want to do so. You know, we don't want to wait till tragedy strikes to, to pray. This is an annual event that we have done going back many, many years. And, um, you know, to be able to gather as a nation and honor God, gather as a nation and recognize that that that. God is is still the one who has established us on the waters and founded us on the seas. Uh, I think is is an important thing, and so we want to we want to honor that and continue to gather for that as righteousness exalts the nation. The Bible says, yes. and so but sin's a reproach. Huh? Sin is a reproach to every people, <laughs> every people, not 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 just some people, every oh, people, every. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, thinking about prayer, mm. I believe prayer is hard work. Mm. And um, again, one would have to be very intentional, yeah. purposeful, because you're going to be praying. Now, yeah. why do I pray? That's very important to understand. So, as Pastor Andrew mentioned that, you know, this nation is a Christian nation. And so we are acknowledging mm -hmm. that there is a God who is sufficient. To mm. take care of our needs. Yeah. And um, it's not only to take care of our needs, asking him to supply our needs. Not only that, but we, we get a chance to partner with brothers and sisters and everyone mm. to say thanks to Lord for really opening up doors for us, mm. yeah. protecting us, shielding us from so many harm and danger. When we consider that the Cayman Islands is pretty flat <laughs> and we are surrounded with 
sectillion gallons of water. And we are not being washed away. So I, I, I have come to the understanding that God has set a door. It's a borderline. Mm. So the waters are not able to come across mm. to destroy us. Now that is enough to thank him for. Yeah. Let, let me ask that because there are those who, who subscribe to that notion that there is a living, breathing, merciful God who exists and who has you know, set his provisions, protected his, set his angels in charge, and there's this thing. Then there, then there are those go, but man, that's a fair deal. We need to wake up. For those who believe that and they pray for provision and protection, they pray prayerfully uh, with a sense of gratitude and in, in that giving of thanks, <coughs> they are mindful that should his hand, you know, Mm. We see the consequence. Yes. Yeah. Um, not only like, you know, you, you know, I'm not sure mothers, but for, for us, uh, our fathers, he's right there. It doesn't matter if we, if, he, if he going before us, it's all good. Yeah. Right. We feel that that thing. Andrew, I mean, <laughs> a loving, merciful God who is real, tangible, mm -hmm. who hears. For those who don't account or have whatever reason going away, how do we get them to see that this isn't a fair deal? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think <coughs> for me, l you look at the universe and, mm -hmm. and, and its precision, its, its ordering, yes. um, the way that everything is just set up, designed, and worked. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, e e even, even to this day, it, it's interesting that as you, as you just look at it, even, even in Romans it talks about this, that you just, just look yeah. at creation and, and it, it just shows you that there's a God. Yes. Um, and it's this fascinating thing where, and I, and I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people about things like this. Um, and, and it's always interesting to hear the perspectives. But, but the reality is, is, is that you, you see what you want to see and you can find what you want to find. Yeah. And, and you can look very easily at, at creation and choose to dismiss that there's a God. But the whole, the whole prospect the of science, for instance, yeah. uh, came about where today we look at it and we say, oh, well, there's a discrepancy between um, science and, and, and religion. That you, but when you look at people like Einstein, who himself was a Christian, um, they, they, they did not see it as something separate than but to, uh, to look at creation and study God's creation. And it's fascinating to be able to see just when we look at the world, Mm -hmm. The beauty, the creation, the way that it works, the way that it operates, uh, the way it's designed, it just very clearly shows us that there is a God. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's, I think, one of the biggest evidences that we have. Yeah. Plus, my family ask you, though, I mean, you know, we talk about Cayman being a Christian society, and not unlike other Caribbean nations or other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cayman context, we're told, is a bit different in that there are I think the last statistics say a thousand different nationalities. I may be over by a hundred, but <laughs> there are a lot of people. <laughs> and in that, there are many different religions sure. are being worshipped. So two things. The, the National Day of Prayer, is it about relationship or religion? And it doesn't matter whether you attend church frequently or you attend a different congregation. Um, who's, you know, who's invited? Who's expected to attend? I mean, what's it about? <laughs> Yeah, all, <coughs> mm -hmm. all, all. Okay. Let's put it right there. All peoples are invited to be there. Yeah. You know, interestingly, I, I just want to piggyback a little bit on yeah. <laughs> and on uh, Pastor Andrew's um, point about the whole cosmological order. You know, and um, how things were being created. Mm -hmm. Now, as a father, uh, I think it is my responsibility to provide for my my children. Mm. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that if I uh, fail to take care of my mm. family, then I'm worse than an infidel. Yeah. I, I don't want to be an infidel. Now, who who gives me that, what a better word, instinct, yeah. <laughs> or that wisdom to care for my family? Mm -hmm. they, they got to be a higher being a higher being. And that higher being is the being that creates us. Right, right. Now, I believe, based on the scriptures, long before 
man came on the scene before he was made. Provisions were made for us. Yeah. So God provided. Whether God is his name or we say Elohim or, you know, there are so many names that are being ascribed to him. Personally, this is my uh, point. I don't even know if we are we are in terms of calling his name. Yeah, we're not qualified yeah. to call his name. Mm -hmm. His name is holy. Yeah. We we still have sparks of sin in us. Hadn't it been for the grace of God, yeah. then we wouldn't be able to talk about him and his creative acts and the yeah. plans that he had for us. So my take on it is that all men, whether or not they accept the Christian God mm. or he worships river, rat, cow, whoever, it tells me that he believes that there is a higher being, mm -hmm. a super being, supernatural being. And so he worships that being. Now, from a Christian perspective, <laughs> the God that I worship is the creator of all things. Now what happened? Why we have all of these confusions? My take on it is that from the fact, Pastor Andrew, that God created Adam, placed in him all the wisdom, he was well balanced, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, intellectually, well balanced, in that everything that he did it was acknowledged by God that's good. Now, we are told in scriptures that he was given a particular command. At what point? After Lucifer backslides, God knew exactly what was going to happen. Hmm. So, he said to this brother, Brother Adam, you know, look, do this and do that. That's where ethics comes in. Mm -hmm. The yeah. do's and don'ts. Yeah. But he chose rather to do the wrong thing. So as a result of that, there was a striking difference, a mark, a line of demarcation at that. He, he couldn't cross over because over here is holy. And he's mixed up yeah. with sin because of Lucifer tempted him and he fell. In a nutshell, just, you know. So what is happening is that Lucifer with his um, agents are now saying, I wanted to stick to Pastor Andrew. I wanted to. Right. And so forth. So, right. you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I believe that all men are in it with uh, a presence of God. Yeah. All right. With that, let's just quickly pause because I'm thinking that there about the grace of God go high, right? So when you come back, let's talk about National Day of Prayer and let's yes. uh, uh, take this break. Thanks to Miss Susan for trying to pay attention to what she says and follow the instructions. Stay tuned for Dr. Day. Discover your dream home with Cayman National's Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate? Depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. The Hurley's Explore Easter Egg Hunt is on. Count, shop, and win. Release your inner child and have some fun with us. Find the Explore Eggs hidden in store at Hurley's. Count the eggs and enter at checkout. Prizes are valued at over $1,500, and the grand prize is a two-night stay in Little Cayman, including flights and accommodation. Hurley's Max members get double entries. Hurley's, where every purchase is an adventure. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care. 
close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with optional cookie platters for dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one cookie, and one bag of chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. The offices of dermatologist Dr. Wayne Porter will be taking appointments from March 18th to 23rd at his Crew Road Clinic. Appointment slots are limited. Whether you are seeking advanced skin care, Botox, filler, cosmetic skin enhancements, or simply looking to reduce wrinkles, Dr. Porter offers a full-service dermatology and dermatological surgery practice. For more information, email dr.porterkman at gmail.com or call 946-9020 to book your appointment today. That's 949-9020. Has the circus come to town? No, it's A.L. Thompson's two-week blowout sale. From March 15 through March 30, get under the huge tent outside A.L. Thompson's to save big. Save up to 75% on lighting, electrical, plumbing, paint, and hardware. Save up to 75% on housewares, building materials, and the ever-popular scratch and dent appliances. Take advantage of the savings while they last. It's March blowout under the tent at at A.L. Thompson's Georgetown. Every day, thousands of us use our roads. I drive to work. My dad drives me to school. I make deliveries across the island. But with every journey comes responsibility. Our actions behind the wheel can have serious consequences. So let's make a commitment to safety. The Cayman Islands government invites you to take the Safe Drivers Pledge. The pledge is our opportunity to show our dedication to creating a safer environment on our roads. Do it for your community. For your loved ones. For yourself. Let's make our roads safer together and say no more for 2024. Visit www.gov.ky forward slash road safety for more information and to take the pledge. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Welcome back, and thanks for joining us, and thanks to Pandu, Pastor Andrew Banks, and Pastor, I make sure that I correct it, because last time I said it, I, you tell Morris, right? Thank you, sir. I, I, I have been saying it, I tell for the longest time, <laughs> so, <laughs> Myself, myself. I, like, <laughs> this is why, you know, trust but verify acts, and you shall receive. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I, good gents, I believe Ms. Susan had shared that there was a call on, Mom. All right. Either that or she's ordering up. Um, I want the turtle with the rice and beans, okay? Yeah. Okay, my style beef for me, please. Yeah, with a piece of corn, cast out cornbread. Remember the one thing else? All right, she'll get back to us in a second. Eh? <laughs> I believe there's a call. I, I think, uh, Miss Susan? No, 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 okay. Uh, she said no lunch either, so. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> ah, boy. I, I'm glad for being... Oh, she said no, there is a call, but no lunch. <laughs> 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 Let's take this call. Hey, welcome. Thank you for calling. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, good afternoon, sir. How are you today? I, I'm well. This is Minister Brian. Uh, I was just going to say that um, I wouldn't mind a uh, a turtle myself. Yeah, you get me hungry. Yeah, but let's arrange it. I mean, gee. <laughs> I think I think came, uh, uh, Radio came out and stepped up his game now, man. I'm only sure that you're allowed to order some good old Cayman food at the same time. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Susan took your order, so we have it delivered for you. <laughs> All just aside, um, I want to say to your panelists, the two pastors in, in the room, um, thank you so much for your continued commitment to, to the right path of life um, and not only um, guiding 
God's sheep in the right direction, but also to continue the um, rebalancing of our society because I must admit that much of the social problems that we're seeing today and the issues that we're dealing with is a reflection of our um, us moving away from our faith in Christ. And, and the truth is, without leaders like yourself keeping the pressure on and even ramping up even more in the communities, in the lives of our, our people, our choirs, um, our congregations, and reminding them of the, the obligation God puts on us to hold our brothers accountable and keep ourselves accountable to what he expects from us. Only then can we um, kind of change a lot of these things that we're facing as a society. Now, I'm a politician, uh, and the men in the room are the deliverers of the word of God. And, and I thank you for this um, day of prayer for everybody. Um, and I, I just want to say that I support you in your continued work because your work is more important than mine. And to be honest with you, the, the good book can, can change the lives of people quicker than any politician can. And I was fu- so funny because this morning I was on the show talking about um, cleanliness and, 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 and the Lord's word about cleanliness being close to godliness and 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 our responsibility about, you know, respecting the rule of law, um, you know, all the principles within the Bible, regardless of whether you believe in the higher being or not, the principle of the Bible tells us to, to live right. And even if you didn't believe in the Almighty, if you just lived by the rules of the Bible, that you would have a great society. And it's no, <laughs> no surprise that we're facing all these things because as we moved away from the church, mm-hmm. so did our society start to deteriorate. So if there's anything I can do to continue to support um, yourselves and, and your colleagues within your ministries, you know, I'll be happy to help in any way because trust me, I, I, I as a politician, I sit down and go, how do, how do we fix all of these massive problems? And some of them are rooted in the foundation of our loss of focus on what is right and what is wrong and, and the best navigation, the best, um, um, you know, light um, guiding light um, that available for us is the Bible, and it tells you all the things you need to know, and that could fix it all. Um, so, you know, I'm just here calling for support. Thank you, and 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 remind, remind your congregation that they too have a responsibility, just as much as the police, to police ourselves, and and hold your brothers and sisters accountable, hold yourselves accountable, because only then can we have a better society. And I can. Um, went on a little bit there, but trust me, the more and more I get older, the more I understand about the problems I'm seeing in my society, I realize that the only way we're going to fix this is get closer to God. And I don't mean just me, it means all of us, because we've so lost our way in so many ways. Um, as a whole, as a whole population of, on how we bring in people and, and, and what their moral compasses are and what our legislation says and how we carry out our norms and our principles, all of those things are going so further away from Christ while you, while both of you men are sitting in your congregations trying to fight against this force that is coming. And I'm going, man, we got to do this all together. If not, we're going to lose, yeah. you know. And anyway, I, I'll leave it there. I just want to say you got my full support. Thank you for praying, and, and I will be at the event. Well, wow, thank you very much. Uh, really is, so thank yeah. you. I was you gonna, know. I was gonna invite you. It, 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 so, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying so, that. Send the, send the invitation to all members. Yes, every single yeah. one of them. Uh, make sure that we all show up to be there and and and, and unison together with what we're facing. Okay. Yeah. Indeed, so. yeah. God bless you all. Have mm-hmm. a good day. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words. God right. bless you. It, it, thanks very much. Right. And this is, I'm so glad that Donald Minister took time to call because. Same, same. Um, Maybe I paid attention a few times in, in church, you know, they say, you know, not, not only is that, you know, uh, sin is a reproach, you know, and righteous exhaust, you know, we talk about uh, the sin of you know, wages of death and all these things, but mm-hmm. where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. Yeah. And in the Cayman context, the fact that we very publicly and purposefully have mm-hmm. prayer in our legislative assembly, on the lawns of government buildings, in yeah. our schools, not just at assemblies and the like. But is it sometimes like anything we just play in church as as I mean? Yeah. Uh you know, I think I think that is a, a an excellent point. Um, you know, it's not just the form of a thing that matters. 
um, but to recognize that that in, in, in the essence of a thing, mm-hmm. it, it really makes a difference. And what I mean by that is that it's great to know the rules, and the Bible's full of lots of principles mm-hmm. and lots of great things that, that, like the minister said, you just do those things and they will they will lead you to a better life. I mean, literally, the Bible has changed the entire world, even yeah. even our, our, our governments from around the world, that even many of them have moved away from biblical mm-hmm. principles. Yes. Their foundations for many of them, even even the idea of a, of a constitution is yeah. out of biblical principles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, based on the fact of what, what Pastor Marsh was talking about earlier about creation, you know, that mm-hmm. the idea that that all people are made in the image and likeness of God is what gave human life value and why we view human life as being valuable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so from there, you know, I mean, just a simple fact, a minister of, of, of our government would call in a radio show and not berate us for being on the radio and talking about this, but it, being supportive of that is a huge thing. So we, we want to recognize that, but we also want to recognize that, as you said, yeah. that this is not just simply something we acknowledge. Jesus talked about this, that you acknowledge me with your lips, but your heart That's is far true. from yeah. me. Yeah. And, and we want to make sure that as we recognize that none of our hearts are, are entirely pure, but it's God who makes the difference. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we, during the break, we talked about Second Chronicles seven fourteen, yeah. And, you know, everyone knows that, or not everyone, but a lot of people know that <laughs> verse. Um, I'll just read it quick. That says, you know, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, a lot of people know that. What they don't know is that in the, in the chapter before mm-hmm. this, that the, the, the Israelites and, and, and Solomon mm-hmm. was actually crying out to God and they said to God, hey, when these things happen, yeah. when, when the rain ceases to come, when, when we're at war, when all these things are happening, we want you to hear from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. And, and this mm-hmm. is God's response to that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And so prayer is, is effective. It's powerful, as the Bible says. Uh, and so we don't ever want to underestimate that. Yeah. We want we want to lean into that as a society, as a nation, yeah. not lean away from that. Yeah, man. And and as Miss Susan has graciously granted uh, one quick call before the, the break, we'll take it. But I'm thinking to our heritage, our sailors' prayer, the seafarers, mm-hmm. always prayerful before and during and after the voyage. Uh, let's take this call. Is that what we're going to do, Miss Susan? Very quickly. With, yes, mom. Thank you for granting it. Welcome. Thanks for calling. Afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, afternoon. How are you? I'm, I'm excellent. Uh, I would like to thank uh, your guests for coming on today and talking about this important subject. And I think that the Cayman Islands need to take a hard look in the mirror and understand that you can't have an all-out assault on the family unit by uh, installing LGBT legislation in the country and expect that there be no consequences. We, the United Kingdom, forced upon us something that is detrimental to the foundation of family. We can't, we cannot expect anything else. And I think if the, if the ministers of government want to do anything, they can seek to have that reversed. Thank you for your time. Uh, thanks so much. And this is where maybe continue public discussion on things. Um, I do recognize that, you know, sort of a lot of slaughter has been taken. But Pastor Morris, in, in closing out, remind us where and when. But in so doing, something that you had shared earlier, uh, it's not about, if I understood it, it's not just about the religions, but a relationship. But even in the Christian context of the Cayman community, we see the different denominations and whether they're all under the Christian umbrella as opposed to some other uh, you know, world-recognized religion. There's such division and discord and disharmony just within the Christian faith, even the denominations who belong to it, but across the divide as well. So help us, sir. It's an unfortunate situation that we're having this yeah. kind of a distortion yeah. within the, the Christian faith. But, mm. you know, Surprisingly, Jesus had a small congregation. <laughs> <laughs> and out of that congregation, he had some issues. Uh-huh. You know, one betrayed him, and another one just went out and um, backslide. And, and Denied so him, yeah. So, you know, uh, for me, 
we will always have these kind of a, a periods, mm -hmm. but it, it is for us to stay focused with an understanding, knowing that we are serving the true and living God. And it is out of those contexts that we will continue to pray privately or publicly and also to say to individuals, there is a God. When I listened carefully to the passage uh, in, in, in Chronicles, uh, if, if, uh, so to me that word if, it's pretty conditional. So it's pivotal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you do this, you will do this. You will yeah. get this. If you do this, I yeah, will sir. do that. All right. Well, thanks very much. And I thanks to Miss Susan. She's a prayer for a lady who understands, like me, the mercies of God, and so granted us a few extra as oh. we go into the, our, our, our news break. Pastor Andrew, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, prayer of the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next week, Tuesday at, uh, at 12 noon till 12.50, mm -hmm. we want to get people uh, in, recognize that they have lunch hours, get them in and out. Um, and so from 12 noon to 12.50 on the Glass House lawn, we'll be having the National Day of Prayer. It's an annual event that we do every year. And so everyone's invited to come out and join us and, uh, as we as we pray. And uh, also the Easter Sunrise services will be on, on, on Sunday as well, mm -hmm. the 31st of March um, at 6 a.m. we got three locations for that, um, which is Seven Mile Public Beach, uh, the, the Spots Dock, and then in Northside, across from the Wesleyan Holiness Church in Northside. And so join us for, for both of these uh, fantastic events as we as we come before God this Easter. Come with a fearful heart. Thanks, thanks very much. Uh, I, I appreciate the Northern Minister for recognizing. So we're going to pause and take the break. When we come back, we'll get a chance to focus on social work. I know that much that must be done in prayer. Stay tuned for Talk Today. From Radio Cayman's Newsroom, this is Headlines, local, regional, international news. With your latest headlines, I'm Felicia rankin Solins. Registration is now open for the cosmetology hygiene and safety training courses for those in the cosmetology industry. To register, contact the Department of Environmental Health at 949-6696 or via email at dehcustomerservice at gov.ky. Training is scheduled for March 25th and May 20th at the Red Cross Conference Room in Georgetown. In international news, the European Commission has proposed a cap on duty-free imports of some Ukrainian produce after months of protests from European farmers. Under the proposal, oats, eggs, poultry and sugar could be subject to limits to prevent cheap imports affecting farmers in the EU. All other Ukrainian imports into the EU would remain free of duties until at least June 2025. These include wheat and barley, despite objections by farmers. The head of Ethiopia's biggest commercial bank has told the BBC that customers who withdrew more money than was in their accounts because of a glitch cannot escape the law. Commercial Bank of Ethiopia customers rushed to take out money or transfer it to other accounts. It took several hours for the state-owned bank to freeze transactions. Those who do not return money that is not theirs will be prosecuted. These are your headlines. I'm Felicia rankin Solins. Radio More news available at www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline, Headline News. news. HSA's Urgent Care Clinic is now open seven days per week to serve you better. Visit our dedicated team at Urgent Care, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and weekends and public holidays, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. No appointment necessary. If you are experiencing non-life-threatening symptoms and conditions, such as the cold and flu, sprains and cuts, earaches, nausea and vomiting, visit Urgent Care's walk-in clinic at the main entrance of the Georgetown Hospital, now open every day. At HSA, we are committed to caring for you. Born September 25, 1947, at Watering Place, Cayman Brack, Royce Adolphus Dilbert was the firstborn son to Helen and Grace Dilbert, Nee Tibbets. As a young boy, he attended Weston Primary School, then later Gainstead High School in Jamaica, when the family moved there to be closer to his dad, who was chief engineer on Kukernel ships. During school breaks, he would work at Hannah's Haberdashery store as a rapper. 
wanting to be a seaman and engineer like his dad, shortly after his 16th birthday, Royce would join his dad on the Kukurnal ship, the Kirk Pride, as a messman, later working on other Kukurnal ships for Bowden shipping on the Merkel, National Boat Carriers, West Indian Towing Company, and West Indian Lines. Mr. Dilbert would enroll at National Technical School and at age 25, he achieved his chief engineer license. By this time, Royce had worked his way up the ranks from BR Messman to Wiper Oiler, Fireman, Second and First Engineer to Chief Engineer. The Cayman Brack Agriculture Show is back. 18 years strong, Saturday, March 23rd, from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the Agricultural Grounds of Songbird Drive on the Bluff. Tons of fun for the entire family. Animals, antiques, art, and crafts displays. Raffle tickets are $10 and include entry. Travel from Grand Cayman is a breeze with extra same-day flights on Cayman Airways. Check them out on Facebook at Brack Agriculture. Show. Don't miss the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show, Saturday, March 23rd. If you can't make the show, tune in to Radio Cayman for coverage throughout the day of the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show. In life, the more you have, the more you have to lose. The more you love, the more you worry. The more people rely on you, the more you have on your mind. I have peace of mind. Knowing that whoever I care about is protected by the very best. With Sagicor Life of the Cayman Islands, you'll have critical illness coverage and life insurance to help you protect what matters most. Call 949-8211 for more information. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Good afternoon. Welcome back. And thanks for joining us. You know, and one of the wonderful things that I enjoy about live radio is that no matter what, the show goes on and the ability to be immediately responsive and impactful can never, ever be understated. Uh, we had a fantastic discussion, all scheduled uh, with respect to Social Work Month and our social workers. But we're so grateful that their priority is to their clientele. And given how things are sometimes, uh, despite honoring their commitments to come here, uh, always better that they attend to the things that they have to. So on their behalf, we extend the apology. We will reschedule that discussion for another time that proves convenient for them. As we celebrate them, we acknowledge and respect uh, the invaluable work that they do and the nature of it at times sometimes would be daunting to the rest of us. So if you're considering careers and it's outside of economics, maybe social work should be one of them. Now, that means that we have open line. Well, uh, I only wish, you know, more than ever today especially, that the cameras were in the space where Miss Susan is, so you can see how, you know, how beaming and bright, you know, it is as opposed to having to you know, gaze upon me, but I'll do my best. And my other request is let's hear from you. Uh, let's get into some discussions that help us to, one, understand the importance of championing the democracy that we have, and two, with that sort of right that we should have to speak, is there a corresponding responsibility to not only speak respectfully, but to actually speak? Many of us take it for granted. Many of us, in our own minds, because of past experiences and observations, are perhaps denying ourselves that opportunity to speak because of the sort of expected consequences or the things that they've experienced. That sense of being intimidated and victimized, that sense that they'll be disinvited or disenfranchised. Now, doesn't mean that it's not real. And what is it that we are told that it is so evident? You know, he who feels it knows it. 
and many times when someone has experienced something they may be a little bit more reluctant to try it again uh, we heard often said you know fool me once shame on you fool me twice well you know try it again let's see what happens is that how it goes Ms. Susan? she said yeah that's how it goes but the question is you know, to what extent are we willing to engage in you know meaningful banter to what extent we are deliberately evocative not provocative you know to provoke people to you know some improper action so let's say what are we doing to evoke others you know, sense and sensibilities to consider uh, from a an informed perspective uh, a willingness to share do we have that uh, there is much that I've been privy to in, in the recent weeks in particular because we're seeing a lot of people face increasingly uh, more and more you know, uh, difficulties uh, financially and uh, the worries of uh, being able to make their, their monthly payments for their loans, uh, whether it's to continue paying the, the bank loan on what, you know, hopefully will one day um, lead to them owning that property, to maintaining the roof over their heads, to putting food on the table, not just the cost or the quality of the food, but the fact that, you know, there is a supply of food. And it's not as some who have shared from a very, very agitated perspective, that seems to be castigating pointing fingers it's just from a level of frustration and then there's the, uh, the the growing alarm about you know our health and well-being uh, the concerns of how some days you hear something that is shocking you know the sudden passing of someone uh, the diagnosis and prognosis of others and then the uncertainty now it could be as many who would attend church service are being told you know and it's the enemy out and about confusing uh, our, our minds and somehow causing our hearts to go astray well I believe as much as some of you uh, who read the scripture and understand maybe perhaps a little more than I do that faith with works is dead uh, but we have to pray without ceasing and as we are prayerful are we also purposeful are we looking at how we can add greater value or is it only about what we can extract? Well, take me to task, you know. I can only be a, a better person uh, if I am willing to listen to good counsel and follow the instruction. But I also have to be willing to listen, try to understand, and then to employ uh, that counsel. Now, many of us, for somehow, for some reason, have either interpreted or have been told that the golden rule these days is simple. He who has the gold makes the rule. Now, it's been ascribed to Rothschild, apparently, that if you want to know who calls the shots, you know, let me see who it is they're writing the checks. Perhaps that is how it's been all along. But is it, isn't it something that we were told when we were rather young that perhaps should be the order of the day, that the golden rule is, in fact, you know, do unto others as you would have them to unto you know, to you, and maybe that's part of the challenge. Uh, we want to be treated in a certain way, so in order to pre-up that, uh, we take the first strike. Well, again, why is that? So, whether it's uh, from a an informed perspective, whether it's just outright questioning, or whether it's indignant and adamant, let's hear from you. Nine four nine eight or thirty seven. I would not know if it's not working unless you share. Nine four nine six nine nine zero. And the other option is a WhatsApp call if you want to get on the air. 925-3261. If you call that on the WhatsApp, we can take your call and put you on the air. If you use the WhatsApp to send a message, uh, we can read it for you. If it's a voice note, we'll play it if that is your choice. But the question, oftentimes, that is rarely asked and even more seldomly answered is, where do we go from here? Where are we now? Well, let's ask and let's answer. 949-837-949-6990 or WhatsApp call us on 925-32-621. I had a sort of part one and part two of uh, an abbreviated presentation given, you know, the sort of comings and goings of some of us. And it had to do with the 
sort of the population size, uh, the, the issue of is the size of our population sufficient to sustain continued government expenditure through uh, uh, the increasing demands for roads and housing and school and all the other infrastructure that comes along with a growing population. And then there was a comment from someone that shared, well, we may have a large number, but is that number be able to contribute and benefit? So we have two calls, one on the WhatsApp and one on the other. Uh, we'll take the first of one and the second of the two, uh, as Ms. Susan decides and dictates, because, hey, if I follow, I might actually uh, get there, as uh, as was always inclined. Uh, we'll take the WhatsApp call. Welcome. Thanks for calling. Hello. Hello. How are you? No, not too bad, are you? Oh, you know, oh. I, I would say one without a say. It's not too bad, just one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's one of those days, you know, but, uh -huh. you know, God, God is good. Mm -hmm. People try to ride you, but you got to just put it in God's hand. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. we do, that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a um, call on Mr. Brian this morning, mm -hmm. but I did heard the last couple of minutes of his conversation in regards to beautification and the garbage and so forth. Mm -hmm. Up here on the Newlands Bypass, which is called, um, oh, what is it called again? The Crichton Boulevard. Uh huh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We got some persons up here cleaning, you know, trying to gather up the garbage, putting it in these bags and putting it on the side of the road, right? Sterling. It, I, I I know it's over, it's over two dozen bags of garbage that these beautiful young ladies are here picking up, and they look pretty full on those those big clear white bags. You know, Sterling, when you sit down and look at the population, and the population is growing rapidly. I don't know really and truly what the governments are putting in place for the garbage. The, the the traffic, which is going to get worse in, in, in time to come, and, uh, and and more 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 other things that is that that is very important out here on, on our main streets. Our main streets are becoming more and more um less 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 safe, less don't have as much safety as like it used to have because we got all these lanes and we got more cars on the road. People just have a hard joy right out here with these lanes. And um, I don't know, um, you know, I don't understand that they go to the house every couple of months and they pass in this budget and that budget and so forth. And I, I, I really can't get the sense, the full sense of what they're passing when they come into to, 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 to putting things in order that people abide by the rules and regulation. And if they don't abide by the rules and regulation, then they're, they're caught in, in charge. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because we cannot continue to run this island like this with all this garbage, with all the crazy driving, and all these vehicles parked all over the place that don't that don't have parts, don't have no owners, and they're just dumping them left, right, and center, and people going taking parts off of them and leaving the body there for the government to come and move it. And you want to tell me we got so many cameras out here, Sterling, and nobody can see nothing to report? Something is definitely wrong. Hmm. Something is definitely wrong. You know, we hear talking about um, the police department is full of, um, I'm going to call the word, full of Jamaicans. But they must sit down and realize that we got them in just about every department of the government as well, too. Not just in the in the, in the um, police department, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So when, it, when this is going to be enough of this that we got to consider putting people here that call themselves born Caymanians that, that want a job. And our people is so, so, um, so fed up and lost courage and they're disappointed and all the kind of stuff that, that's happening to them and it gives them no motivation to go look a job. Because Sterling, you should not have to um, fight for a job in your own country. You understand? Mm -hmm. You should not have to fight for a job. And when you got to fight for a job, and you do get the job, 
after um, three weeks, it did, say six months, um, you're on a job, and they get rid of you. But you got a job sometime now, or two weeks, one week, they want to get rid of you. That stops. Because as long as these people can keep doing this to the Caymanians and getting work permits for these people to come in here to work, the Caymanians will never get into a job. They roll over when they did a roll over many years ago. They said that that was going to help Caymanians get jobs. But how can I help Caymanians get jobs, Sterling, when these people can leave here for a year and some of the jobs can be done in a computer where they act and still get a salary from the Cayman Islands, uh, from their bosses? Or if it's a domestic, they can go for a year and the job is still guaranteed. How are you going to put Caymanians into jobs? And when it comes to tourism, we are not teaching our children. Well, you know, they got a success, a passport, um, this and a couple of little things rolling. But Sterling, the, we cannot put the people in these things and expect them to do miracles overnight. They're like learning all over again because they feel defeated. You understand? Mm -hmm. They feel defeated. So long as they're feeling defeated, they got to come out here feeling timid and scared and, and do them to do it right. Or if they're going to have a job tomorrow morning and all that kind of stuff. Then we need to give our people some sort of incentive that, you know what? We got to we gotta fix this. And they got to have to come between the government and, and the people of the island and, and the jobs, especially in the hotels and, and the rest of the tourism um, jobs and so forth. They have to be guaranteed a job. And they don't get fired for the simple little thing. Nobody's perfect. When the owner or the manager don't feel good for the day, they don't come to work. So around the came and I'm calling sick. You understand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to give them some incentive, some encouragement. And government needs to look into that to help the people. Because you cannot expect to come on here every four years looking for a vote and promise them promise them everything that is good. And then when you get in, you forget you forget us. That can't work. People can tolerate. They're getting upset. They're worried. Mm -hmm. And they're coming out and they don't care who they hurt when they're ready. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we need we, we need to wake up strongly in this island because it's not looking good for the few Caymanians that is left. And the Caymanians is not a custom of going to fight to hold a job because many years ago you could have gone and changed a job. <laughs> like how you, you change a uniform. You could have picked you in a few jobs, but no more. Mm -hmm. You got to show me why you fired my Caymanian. You got to tell me what did they do so wrong? Ain't that deserve to, to take to learn? Ain't that deserve to stay here for five years, ten years to, to become part of your business because then they did something wrong of not getting to work on time or calling sick? And you're going to say, well, you know what? I can get a work permit and I know for sure they will be here every day, rain or sunshine. Is that what it got over us, Sterling? As I'm listening to you, I'm looking at a couple of comments being shared by some of our listeners and uh, one that was related off air that's repeated to me, you know, should, uh, should the permit uh, for the person who returns after a period of absence, should that be higher than the permit that was originally paid? Um, and then should there be some sort of uh, declaration, uh, another word is used, but perhaps that's a better one, uh, that... Sterling? Uh-huh. Don't care how much you raise that permit, they got to find that money for that permit. When you had your seven years in this island, you and you gone home, I don't want to be so raw, but the, the, they said the truth mm -hmm. always hurt. Mm -hmm. If your time is up, your time is up. When you come in to work on a work permit, Sterling, you were not told that you'll be having a work permit for the rest of your life in mm -hmm. the Cayman Islands. Everything has an ending to it. Okay. But, but you see what happened? People come here, and we got people here right now on work permits that don't even have a job. They live in warehouses throughout the island. They're sleeping in bathrooms on the beach and freshen up and going on the road looking outside work to take to, to, to get a couple of dollars to go and pay the individual who has a work permit for them. That needs to stop people here with no work, but mm -hmm. yet they got a work permit. Okay. You are... You are it is something... Yeah. Now, we've got a couple of other calls on. Um, sure, go right ahead. Go right ahead. No, thank Talk you. Later. Thank you, too. Okay. All bye right, bye. so, bye-bye. So, take a quick call. Okay, welcome. Thanks for calling. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. And to you, how are you today? I'm doing very well. My name is Quincy Brown. Thank you for taking my call. Good afternoon to you and by extension, all your listeners in Radio Land. I call today to promote two events. Uh-huh. Uh, one, is a, one is a community event with no admission, so I can give that full promotion. The other is uh, an event that's going to be cost attached. So I know you have a sales department, so I'm not going to try and pull a smart one on you. You right? never do, man. You never do. Not at all. Oh, yeah. But before I plug my two events, how much time do I have? Because I know you have other callers. Uh, Miss Huzon, how much time does he have? Because God has granted you another decade and oh, plus a exactly. century, right? So go right ahead. She says Thank what? Thank you very much indeed. Right. Okay. It's all about community. Yes, sir. So we realize the importance of prayer. Mm-hmm. Not only prayer in our personal lives, where we pause, reflect, and we cry out to a deity of our choice. I listened intensely as you had the two pastors on your show probably about an hour or half an hour ago. I listened. Yes, sir. And we come to a point now where collectively we realize that this train called Cayman is running down the train track at a high speed. And a train does not work like a car or a truck where you can just slam brakes on. It doesn't work like that. And we realize our need now, our collective need to call out to God. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, for many of us in the church, we've been doing that. For many who go to church every Sunday, for many who are perhaps more behind the scenes, who have private prayer lives, they've been always praying. But when you call on a national day of prayer, that's calling all peoples together. Hindus, Buddhists, Islam, Christians, Jews, Scientologists, Mm -hmm. because we call out to God. Some say Jesus, some say Vishnu, some say Brahma, some say Ra. The truth of the matter is, we believe, here we are in Lent as we approach Easter, we believe that Christ shed his blood, the sacrificial lamb that redeemed us. But mm-hmm. not everybody believes that. Mm-hmm. And we have been so welcoming to everyone, and this train is going down the track at 675 miles an hour, and the train can't stop. Mm-hmm. I am not a politician. I am a political activist. There's a big difference. I'm a child of God, and I do pray. There's more prayer in my life now, more contemplation, more meditation. Yes, we need to pray. And you know what? The family is the first church. We start with prayer in our family. Let us pray. So now I'll promote the two events, and I'll do so as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, This one I won't give too much Moto because I'm hoping that they will come to the Radio Cayman sales department hmm. and actually put out some, some commercials. But if I can quickly say, mark your calendars for April the 13th and April the 14th, where we have UCCI, the UCCI Dance Company, the Cayman National Cultural Foundation, and all coming together. <laughs> to Culturama. Culturama. A night of great cultural presentation, performances, at Harkwell Theater, April 13th, April 14th. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. And I'm hoping that you'll have them on talk today to promote it, and they'll perhaps run some commercials on Radio K-Man because Radio K-Man has the number one sales department on radio stations. When it's an election year, all politicians know that too, eh? <laughs> all right, but I'll close, though, by saying Culturama, Harkwell Theater, April 13th, April 14th. The UCCI dancers will be at their best. And I thank persons like Dr. Monica Lawrence, who works tirelessly bringing the dance up to a high standard, Glenn and Anger with the choir, Mm -hmm. and of course the Cultural Foundation, always facilitating cultural expression, performance arts in the Cayman Islands. Now, what we need to do is we need to live a sober life. It is possible. I look at the Hope for Today Foundation, Caribbean Haven, the Bridge Foundation, and the different programs that allow us to lead clean and sober lives. This is a free event. I can spend a little time on this. This is community free, no money to be made. I would like to thank uh, the National Drug Council, the NDC, Boys to Men, Pastor Christopher Murray, of course, Simon Miller of the NDC, the Alex Panton Foundation, a special mention to the founders, uh, Mrs. Jane Panton, because on the 8th of April, mark the date, April the 8th, through April the 12th, we are bringing a U.S. motivational speaker by the name of Richard Barn, but we just say Rich for short. You can check out his website, www.richfulthinking.com.
www.richfulthinking.org. We take Rich from, from Richard, www.richfulthinking.org. He's coming to Cayman. Now, he's been to the BRAC in 2018, so BRACers know who he is. He's mm-hmm. been to the BRAC High School, so he's bringing a message of hope to our young people, uh, a message of experience, strength, and hope, because our young people are starting to drink and drug and get involved with all sorts of godlessness at younger ages. Here's a man who has been clean and sober for 18 years, so his first time to Grand Cayman, he's already been to the BRAC in 2018, coming into all the high schools across Grand Cayman, and coming to West Bay, the John A. Cumber Town Hall, the John A. Cumber Primary School Hall. So mark your calendars, April 8th to 12th, Mr. Rich Barnes from Boston, Massachusetts, in the Cayman Islands, mm-hmm. going into the high schools with the message of hope, a drug-free. It's called the Rich Barnes Say No to Drugs and Alcohol 2024 Cayman Islands Conference. Please mark your calendar. So thank you, Radio Cayman, for allowing me to come on to promote these two events and to say, yes, we need to pray Cayman Islands, founded upon the seas, mm-hmm. founded on Christian principles. Perhaps now is the time it for is. our members of parliament mm-hmm. to reverse some of these policies that have gone through, that goes contrary to the Holy Bible. We are built on biblical principles. In God, we trust all others, Patriarch. Have a good afternoon. <laughs> Chris, thank you. <laughs> you know, as even that, as you go to the break, uh, we used to, on uh, days, or yes, the year when we purchased, it was on trust. Nowadays is on credit. Uh, it's not just a change in word uh, in our practice. Stay tuned for Talk Today. Are you a recent graduate or school leaver? Are you looking for career development advice or education and training opportunities? Your future awaits you this Friday, March 22nd, at the annual Chamber of Commerce Career, Education and Training Expo. Free for the public from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the UCCI Auditorium. 37 exhibitors are ready to meet you to share information about career education and training opportunities. Free to attend this Friday at UCCI from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. The Chamber of Commerce wishes to thank you to our major sponsors, Doctors Hospital, the CIAA, CML, EY Cayman Limited, Work, HSA, Health City, Maples Group, CIDB, the Ministry of Financial Services and Commerce, and Enterprise Cayman. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have bar. Barbados, going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, L.A., and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. From boat days to beach gatherings, Leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with With optional optional cookie cookie platters platters for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one One cookie cookie and and one one bag bag of chips chips. for all occasions and celebrations. Let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. Shop the Brand Source Home Gallery Senior Citizen Sale. In honor of our seniors, Brand Source Home Gallery is offering a 15% discount now until April 6th on appliances, mattresses, plumbing and bath fixtures, lighting, ceiling fans, kitchen cabinets, custom closets, and more. And I heard right, 15% off store wide. If you are over the age of 60, you can purchase for your family and friends. Just show your ID. It's that easy to save 15 percent with the brand source home gallery senior citizen sale visit brand source on dorsey drive industrial park or call 623-5000 for details at doctor's hospital we know life happens and usually when you least expect it so when unexpected medical issues arise you need quality care 
close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. Find your dream car with a Cayman National Vehicle Loan. Enjoy 100% financing, up to eight-year repayment, and a 7% fixed interest rate for the first five years. For eco-friendly cars, we'll waive your commitment fee. This only applies to new vehicles. Call 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. The Cayman Islands Gender Affairs Unit invites the public to join us on Friday, March 22nd at the Glass House Lawn on Elgin Avenue for the Women in Agriculture Farmers Market from 1.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Come and support women-owned or operated farms and related businesses showcasing their agricultural-based products. From fresh produce to homemade goods, your purchases will contribute to the economic empowerment of women in agriculture, making a real difference in our community. Mark your calendars, spread the word, and join us in celebrating the remarkable women shaping our agricultural sector. To register as a vendor, visit frc.gov.ky. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. And man, being able to work with such a fantastic organization and a great team like this, makes it almost seem effortless. So thank you all. As we continue open line until 2 p.m. when we get a chance to speak to Mr. John Lawrence, the GM over at our Botanic Park about the upcoming orchid show. But let's go to the phones. Welcome, thank you for calling. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't uh, get much of that, I guess in the first segment uh, with the pastors or whatever. Yes, sir. But as I understand it, the annual National Day of Prayer is coming up. Uh, when when is it? Next next Tuesday, uh, twelve o'clock, and it's going to go until twelve fifty. So on the lawn of the glass house, in order to get you know people back uh, to work, you know, relatively speaking, you know, uh, on time. Yeah, well, I you know over the years. I've attended a lot of a lot of these National Day of Prayers, mm. and we call it a National Day of Prayer. But I don't believe that I've ever seen probably more than one percent or two percent of the population uh, participating mm -hmm. uh, in the in the event, and I, I wonder whether there should not be more of a concentrated outreach uh, to the population to let them be aware of the National Day of Prayer. Because, you know, having it one time on one or two radio stations and, you know, with all the other impinging uh, priorities or demands or pleasantries or whatever, however you want to describe it, on people's time, Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of these things drift by them, but they're not, not even being aware that these things, we call it a national, national event, hmm. is happening. I, I, I share, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I was going to ask, go, no, ahead. go, go ahead. Yeah. ahead. I share your concerns, right? And I'm thinking that perhaps, we, uh, as you related, you know, they're, the announcements within the respective congregations, uh, you sort of literally, you know, speaking to the choir, to the choir. But I wonder too that even though it's a national day of prayer and it's an invitation extended to all, I wonder to what extent within even the, the Christian churches, whether the people from different denominations and congregations and and what happened, you of their religious persuasions, 
will they attend or will they see it as you know just that grouping and then as you reference the percentage of the population uh, is it that the population has now uh, become not just so varied but so voluminous that at the end of the day uh, our our approach and prioritization of prayer is in no longer uh, something that we see of value. Well, I, 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 I think what you just said there about uh, the prioritization, if that's the word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or, or the, the value of, of prayer in one's daily life is probably, yeah, diminished to, it, to the point that, uh, you know, not very many people recognize it. But, uh, and I, I think it just picking up on, on um, but the last five minutes of the, the thing with the pastors, mm -hmm. and, I think the, the question of the heritage uh, of Yemen in, in, in the, uh, the religious sector, you know, where I think uh, you could say that, well, I think it's, it's somewhere in the Constitution that it's a, you know, we're developed as a Christian community. Mm -hmm. And yet, with all the people that come across here, not uh, from wherever, there is no orientation for them when they're coming to this Cayman Islands community. Now, and as I think back, I believe, and I, I think I'm right about that, that at one time there was a, an, they call it an orientation for people coming here and work from it. Now, you can't expect these people to come in and buy into what came on supposed to be if they don't know. So mm -hmm. maybe and the uh, I think the subject of work permits came up in some of the narrative along, along the way in various uh, aspects of it. Maybe that should be reinstituted. You come into Cayman, the first two days you in Cayman, or make it two and a half days or three days or whatever, you're being told of what Cayman is all about. And what is expected of you when you come across that insurer there. So I just throw that out because uh, a lot of things that, that are happening here I think is probably uh, could be based on a lack of really familiarity, knowledge of what is expected of you when you Come across the reef. Yeah. Come come on shore. Well, it's it's interesting. I mean, uh, and, and as I listened to what you shared while trying to somewhat read what another was sharing, I see the disconnect from the perspective of is Cayman just a place for financial gain it's for all of us, whether we just come here, whether we've been here generations. Uh, is it the notion that let's get, as this person says, let's get where the going is good, all right? And then with that in mind, is it that we only see what is transpiring now and there is no concern for, you know, others and much less future generations? I didn't catch that last two sentences. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Can you repeat? Yeah, sorry. I'm a question to what extent you know, we're only looking at what we can get now and there's no concern you know, for future generations and that it's all about uh, the order of the day is how much money I can get. You know, Avarice seems to be the mantra. Well, I think if you review the last probably... Uh, I don't know what's today. Today is 24, uh, 50, 70, 
I'd say over the last 85 years, well, let's say 70 years, you'll see that a big part of what you just described in those last couple of sentences mm -hmm. is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. well, and it, it, I think you can take everybody at the wheel, companions and those that are not here, or those that are here, rather, to, you know, it, you know, you hear sustainability, sustainability. Well, mm -hmm. what are we gonna, what are we gonna sustain, and for who? Well, this is this is it, right? Uh, and and I think sometimes the way it was asked was inflammatory. I think sometimes the way it was received was perhaps, uh, you know, incomplete when it's, you know, question for whom are we developing? And uh, maybe maybe we've somehow confused, you know, the, the construction sector and development and conflated the two, thinking they're one and the same. And that money from, presumably, the government receives from construction, you know, through whatever mechanism, is that somehow contributing to our development? And as we look at advances in construction techniques as growth in population, as we look at other things, is that somehow construed as progress? Um, now, I don't know if it's deliberate I don't know if it's something that we are uh, just ill-informed, but when people talk about yesteryear and have uh, their response that nobody wants to go back to the smoke pan days or you know this and that, I don't think that's what people are saying. I think they're saying that yesteryear, when there was a conscious ethos of being your brother's keeper, when honesty was the order of the day, or when despite poverty and uh, and the like, you didn't have crime. And I wonder again when we hear people say that you know, because of joblessness or because of these other social things, that's the reason why we have crime. Uh, and in the Cayman not long ago, there was no crime. There was no great financial wealth. Uh, there was no sort of, you know, great employment prospects. But yet there was community. Well, you know, I, I, I think uh, you know you can just look at uh, and you hear mm -hmm. you hear uh, complaints all the time on the very on the, on the radio. And you hear it from people on the street, people in the supermarket, whatever, complaining about what is generally known as the South Bay Public Beach. Okay. But, but okay, yeah, go but, ahead. Uh, you know the access to that, so forth and so on. Yeah. And sixty, sixty-five years ago, let's see, twenty-four, six, four, yeah. Mm. That very strip of of land, that six hundred forty feet of water, was was mm. about to be swallowed up by development. Yeah. Right. If people hadn't stepped in, and you know, made sure it was secured. Right. But, but let me ask, right, even to that, and the way we now term things, please help me that I didn't misunderstand or misinterpret uh, or mishear or any which we have been misinformed. That was known as the public beach, correct? It was known as the public beach. Yeah, it, it, there was no other nomenclature. It was called the public beach. Up until well, recent times. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, 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 as far as I, I'm right. aware, from, from the time, I guess, it was uh, in the early 60s right. or maybe late 50s. And it was when, the... When, when the JCs, JCs made a giant effort to, to secure right. it. Yeah, it was... Uh, okay. No, uh, some mile beach public No, it was the Polar Beach, public right? Beach. And, and was it that that was the first public beach sort of constructed or developed or made it accessible formally on on Grand Cayman at the very least well no I I, I don't I don't I don't, uh, I don't think so I think if 
you want to consider public beaches. Mm -hmm. The first one was probably what is what, what is now they call Governor's Governor's Beach, okay. in that vicinity where the public bathhouse was at. Right. And that okay. Was where people, you know, went to have parties and right. sit down, and look at the moon, and figure out what uh, what it should be doing to you, and so forth and so on. Right. And uh, I think, as far as I, my my memory uh, goes back now, maybe in some of some of the other districts, I think. There might have been some 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 beaches right. uh, that was considered uh, pub public beach. Right, or, and a lot of that land that you reference were sort of crown lands, and then it was subsequently leased. Uh, we heard the name Mr. Greenall and the like. Uh, well, yeah, just about all, just about all that. Uh, right, as I, I recall, or I've been told, yeah. that whole uh, you want to call it the isthmus from yeah. not across from from the Georgetown. Uh, Cemetery took a D line across to where it meets up is in North Sound there and mm -hmm. uh, and came down to the West Bay Cemetery and took a, a B line and round to the North Sound. All of that basically uh well let's say probably sixty five to seventy five percent of it was crown land. Right. And, and there's a reason why I was asking because I think being ill informed or being perhaps unwilling to sort of stand with a sense of, of purpose and conviction we let things be uh, renamed or somehow um, re uh, represented in a way that causes people to not be certain of who they are and so like it's now called today for whatever reason the seven mile beach polar beach does that simple name change serve as an affront to all the other changes. Uh, sir, I'm told we have a break. Are we going to go to the news, Miss Susan, after this break? Uh, she's in charge and we're at large, so stay tuned for talk today. Thank you, sir. You know, as a little girl, I dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands. I tell you what, though, no more dreaming. I'm going flying with Cayman Airways. How blessed are we in the Cayman Islands to have a very own national airline? Girl, you can fly to so many international destinations without the hassle of connecting flights. On top of Jamaica, Cuba, and Honduras, you got non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, and even Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, and child, they now have Barbados. Going to be a little cafe con leche and Hollywood Squares for this old girl. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways. Offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, LA, and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit CaymanAirways.com. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets. 
At KFC, we handbread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. On Saturday, March 23rd, it's the annual Spring Fest 2024 at the Mango Tree featuring Lord Laro. Lord Laro performing live at the Mango Tree alongside, for the first time in K-Man, Judy Boucher. Judy Boucher. Yeah, that's right. Get your tickets now. This is a limited seating event on Saturday, March 23rd. Mango Tree. Tickets are $35 pre-sold and $45 at the gate. VIP tables are available. Call 916-7667 for more info. Purchase your tickets at the Mango Tree or get them online at caymanevents.co. The Ministry of Education invites eligible Caymanians to apply for a local scholarship for the 2024-2025 academic year. To apply for a local scholarship or learn more about the various scholarship offerings, please visit the Scholarship Secretariat Unit's website at www.moescholarships.gov.ky. Applications close on Tuesday, 30th of April, 2024. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Education. The Cayman Brack Agriculture Show is back. 18 years strong, Saturday, March 23rd, from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. at the Agricultural Grounds of Songbird Drive on the Bluff. Tons of fun for the entire family. Animals, antiques, art and crafts displays. Raffle tickets are $10 and include entry. Travel from Grand Cayman is a breeze with extra same-day flights on Cayman Airways. Check them out on Facebook at Brac Agriculture. Show. Don't miss the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show, Saturday, March 23rd. If you can't make the show, tune in to Radio Cayman for coverage throughout the day of the 18th annual Cayman Brack Agriculture Show. This is the People's Radio Station. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands www.radiocayman.gov.ky Check out our social media pages Facebook, YouTube, X formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline News With your latest headlines, I'm Felicia rankin Solens. On Friday, March 22nd, you can head over to the Truman Bodden Law School for their latest Uni Talks for an introductory discussion on decentralized autonomous organizations, including a brief history and current trends. It starts at 1 p.m. and admission is free. In international news, scientists say they have successfully eliminated HIV from infected cells using Nobel Prize winning CRISPR gene editing technology. Working like scissors but at the molecular level, it cuts DNA so bad bits can be removed or inactivated. The hope is to ultimately be able to rid the body entirely of the virus, although much more work is needed to check if it would be safe and effective. Existing HIV medicines can stop the virus but not eliminate it. Former Nickelodeon producer and writer Dan Schneider has apologized for his embarrassing on-set behavior at the Children's Channel. A new documentary released earlier this week alleged years of abuse and inappropriate behavior at shows including iCarly and Drake and Josh. Mr. Schneider left Nickelodeon in 2018 after an investigation found that he was verbally abusive to staff members. He has now said he owes some people a pretty strong apology. The four-part docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV includes several allegations of Mr. Schneider making inappropriate and sexual jokes on set. These are your headlines. I'm Felicia rankin Zollins. More news available at www.radiocayman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline News. Radio Cayman's Talk Today.
What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm hoping that you are able to not only hear, but you can actually see us uh, log on to our YouTube because in this studio, there's something very beautiful. No, it's not me nor John. <laughs> <laughs> our general manager over the Botanic Park, Mr. Lawrence. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks for having us back again. It's been a while. We always talk about coming back more often, but we need to make a habit of it. But I'm grateful to be here well, to talk about the Orchid Show. We would welcome you anytime because it's, it's something about plants and nature. And there's something to me very you know specific and particular about the local flora and fauna. And man, it's, it's amazing the plants that we have. Yeah, Cayman is really special. I, I don't think enough people realize how important and diverse we have on such a small little piece of the world. We have such a high diversity and high amount of important plants that aren't really recognized. And, and you know, thanks to COVID, COVID was bad, but during COVID, um, it actually kind of mm. stirred up a lot of recognition of nature and how important it is to be in touch. And there's been kind of a recent movement about you know, how important plants are to us and how peaceful yeah. and how healthy they are. So we're part of that at the Botanic Park. Mm. And um, I, this is one part of the weekend to hopefully showcase more people to the Botanic Park at the Orchid Show. All right. Now I'm continuing discussions, but I want to ask because sometimes many of us, we, we take so much for granted. We're traveling through the grass piece and there's a bush but until you're told that actually that's an important bush for different reasons, from the medicinal to otherwise. But I gather that a lot of the, the plants, and maybe there's a better word to use, but you know the things that are in the ground that grow, that don't walk about in the place or make any noise, a lot of those plants, right? Because that generally would be a good way to call it. Exactly. Okay. I'm with you. Plants, okay. See, I got that part right. I think I paid attention in that class. <laughs> a lot of those are only found here. Yeah, Cayman has a... a quite a high degree of endemic plants that ah. are found nowhere else in the world. And the tropics are really important for the world because of of both the high level of endemic plants, but also a high level of medicinal plants where a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of our medicines that we take as a pill um, originate from. So it's it's really important to protect our diversity, to protect our nature and you know, the Botanic Park is, is doing our best to, you know, be a part of that. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that my uh, attempt would not be lost on some listening ears and that, yeah, I got a little insight into what I was saying, not only because I pay attention to the notes that you shared, but to get us, just like you said, you know, that national imprisonment that we all were subjected to not long ago actually had some benefits. Many people took it and they were writing and being creative Many people re reflected on the natural environment, paid attention to their plants because it was good both for them physically and mentally. But then there was a reawakening of how important this thing is. But I don't believe that enough of us appreciate that some of the things that are found here, like our plants, aren't found anywhere else. And if they're lost here, like many places, when they're gone, they're gone. And that's the same with stories in history everywhere around the world. Uh -huh. But, you know, a walk in the bush... Um, is scientifically proven to reduce your blood pressure, mm -hmm. to make you calm down, to make you relax, make you de-stress. And those are things that everyone is dealing with in a greater capacity than we're used to. Yeah. So it's really important that we conserve and go out and catch some fresh air and go for a walk <laughs> and, you know, in, in the trees. And yeah, it's hot out and everything, but y you're yeah. going to benefit from that. I, I confess I don't recall the term that is ascribed to it, but as you said, you know, if we go walk amongst the the woods and the bushes and outdoors, it's actually good for you. Scientifically proven, there's a particular term. I don't know if you Most know. Most definitely, it. I don't know what the term yeah, is, yeah, but uh, come back to me. There, there's mean, one for it, right? Yeah, I mean the Botanic Park tagline from the beginning was "Be one with nature." Yeah. And uh, we all need to be more with nature than just being mm -hmm. one with nature. Right. And and the reason why I share that is that many of us, very consciously, we go for a walk of fresh, a, a little fresh air. Some of us in that, we want to exercise, but mindful that I won't create any more fodder than that already exists. During that period and to some limited extent continuing now, I get to go walking with some people, places I haven't been in the longest time. 
uh, places that I didn't know existed because of development. And to see the ball play, or as I call the ball play, mm-hmm. to see, you know, the Cayman Parrot in two and three pairs at a time, to see so much that we probably didn't realize was there because we didn't take time to see it. Yeah, and it's and it's disappearing, which is a problem. Yeah. But um, you know, we we need to make make more time for ourselves and make more time being outside and going for a walk and mm. putting that phone in your pocket and turning it off, even <sighs> if it's for 10 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, does the body good? It does the body good. A lot like being in the salt water, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but let me then ask, because uh, if if you would, you know, you know, or the family wouldn't mind me remembering him, Mr. Kirky, mm-hmm. right? Uh, here's a man that just by his physical imposing presence was a giant of a man, but here's a man who also in his giantness is very gentle, and he, his his orchids, as Miss Melville will tell you, was just as important to him as his officers. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, um, Mr. Nixon was uh, kind of like an adopted father for me. Yeah. He was a founding person of the Cayman Islands Orchid Society, mm-hmm. and also he's one of the founding people of the Botanic Park that we all enjoy, mm-hmm. and. Um, he saw that early on, and um, it's sad that he's not with us, but um, he's made an impact on a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the Botanic Park um, is is here is his, you know, um, yeah. to be a part of forever for everybody in the community of the Cayman Islands. And it's, it's in sort of trying to pay deference to him, reflecting, you know, I, I look at uh, the, the women who are honored to know whether they're family, or family adjacent, it's most of the women who are out, you know, propagating the, the plants, who are tending to the orchids. And and here is uh, a gentleman like Mr. Kirkland who y- you don't argue with him because, you know, he <laughs> has... <laughs> you laugh, huh? yep. you try that and lost too. <laughs> yep. He's a gentle giant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and through him, I got to appreciate um, very much like uh, Mr. Joel Walton that whatever their professional sort of acumen, whatever that careers that they have, there's this interest and knowledge from the scientific means and the uh, the history and impact of a plant. And it shows you that it's more than just a therapeutic approach. There is, a, no pun intended, a cultivation of knowledge. Exactly. And um, the importance of that really needs to be expressed more, especially mm-hmm. amongst our youth. Yeah. And, I mean, that's one of the reasons the Children's Garden um, okay. development is going on at the Botanic Park. Nearly finished, but, mm-hmm. again, we need to get more kids outside. Yeah. I want to ask two things, uh, just to make sure I never misunderstood initially. But in Cayman, like other species of, of plants, we got some particular orchids that are only here. Initially, they were only here. Is that true? Totally true. Um, oh. Cayman has, depends who you talk to, I think between 23 and 26 native Mm -hmm. orchids and we have an endemic uh we have about again depends who you ask three to six endemic orchids that are found nowhere else in the world and more importantly our our national flower the cayman banana orchid um is one of them and it's also a very important orchid that's used in orchid culture and um among orchid people throughout the world now okay so because i do not recall but absolutely 100% 100% accuracy. Who said it? I only recall Mr. Nixon's sort of um, position on it to some extent, right? That has led me over the ensuing decades. I can see him and Mr. Jefferson, you know, having a conversation. Mr. Nixon saying, you know, you, you should get into plants a little more than, you know, all the other stuff you do. And that that desire, that passion, that, that thing that they brought him, I mean, he would talk about going in, into his greenhouse and taking one species and combined it with another species. Uh, well, that has a term for it, right? Yeah, it's He'd, the breeding, basically. The, okay, that's what it is. Okay, yeah. see, a scientific thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he would do things that go, wow, here's a fellow who, you know, by his own admission, the trail never, he's learning this thing as he goes, and he was creating his own hybrids. Mo- exactly, right? exactly. And the, the banana orchid is used immensely in the in the orchid Mm-hmm. society of the world as a it's it's a great plant that other plants mm-hmm. mix with and get along with and create beautiful new hybrids yeah. um, that are really popular everywhere 
and this is sort of what has led me over the years to try to reflect on did I understand this conversation correctly? Have I extrapolated what was being shared? Was I too young to appreciate the context? And it wasn't that we shouldn't take what we have and share it with the world, but it was that whenever we so do, whether it's going to one of the countries in the region or going across the pond, that we do so in a way that the respect and recognition for Cayman is there, but also the protection and preservation. And I sort of still have this in my mind that we didn't do that. Yeah, it's a, that's a really uh, a yeah. tricky, tricky uh, <laughs> point. Um, yeah. Orchids have millions of seeds, right? Mm-hmm. And if every seed germinated, we'd have millions of orchids everywhere. Mm-hmm. So um, we should be proud of what we have, and it should mm-hmm. be noted and recorded um, mm-hmm. when, a, when one of our orchids is used. And most of the breeders internationally do that. Um, mm-hmm. But it gets lost. It gets watered down. But um, yeah. we need to be proud of what we have yeah. here. All right, John, when we come back, uh, I have two things to ask you. What's the best thing to go for snappers? No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the orchid show. And I see this thing in front of me, and I'm thinking, man, that looks good. No way did my sister touch that. But I just get down. <laughs> well, she is not listening to me. <laughs> And people go, which sister? He has seven. <laughs> no, they're amazing. So I want you to tell us about this when you come back. And then if you look through the looking glass and you see you know, yonder in the red, tell us about... No, don't do that. You can't ask that question either. The, <laughs> Wahoo, the Wahoo are biting now too. <laughs> Try us after the break. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens. And usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone call 949-6066 you know as a little girl i dreamt of traveling to faraway places and foreign lands i tell you what though no more dreaming i'm going flying with cayman airways how blessed are we in the cayman islands to have a very own national airline girl you can fly to so many international destinations without a hassle of connecting flights on top of jamaica cuba and honduras you got non-stop flights from cayman to new york miami tampa and even denver los angeles panama and child they now have barbados going to be a little cafe con leche and hollywood squares for this old girl Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering non-stop flights for non-stop adventures in Panama, L.A., and many more places in between. For details and to book, call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. Discover your dream home with Cayman National's Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate? Depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. It's Digicel's 20th birthday bash, and you're invited. We are giving away 20 phones for 20 years. Win an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone as part of our anniversary celebration. Simply spend $20 or more at Digicel or be an active postpaid customer, and you could be our lucky winner. It's our way of saying thank you for 20 incredible years of connection and support from our amazing customers like you. Don't miss out on this epic celebration. Go to your nearest Digicel store today and join the party. Digicel, better connected. This is Winston Connolly, and I work in the financial services sector. I'm concerned about the way climate change is affecting our energy sector. Storms can delay fuel imports and damage infrastructure, and heat waves can destabilize the grid. These issues can prevent Caymanians from using their cars, lights, and air conditioning. To learn more about the climate risks to our islands, visit www.gov.ky forward slash climate change policy. Radio Cayman's Talk Today.
What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us. And uh, we got a chance to speak about orchids, and I won't profess to tell you any more than I think they're beautiful. I can't call them beautiful creatures, but they're amazing. They're creatures. They're creatures? Yeah, they're animals. Yeah. They're animals, they're plants. <laughs> they're living, they're breathing. All right, well, the general manager of the Botanic Park, he would know. So John Laurels. Two things they say he knows, plants and fish. I can only say <laughs> thanks to Eric Rivers, Baldhead, West Bay, for my fishing knowledge. <laughs> Shout out to Eric. But um, uh, Kirky, Mr. Kirky Nixon hired me many yeah. moons ago, and uh, I appreciate him bringing me here yeah, and man. being a part of the community and now running the park. Yeah, man, yeah, man. And I mean, anybody who called Eric a friend should be given an award. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I know you little. I hope he's not listening. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I hope his brother Jeffrey is because it's gonna be worse for me. <laughs> no, but but that's the laughter that we have because to to look at you and and to realize that the love that you have for us, we have for you, the love you have for plants and for nature, and, and the ease with which the invitation is there for all of us to come. Uh, I am grateful that my sisters will take our mother and mm. the botanic park. To them, the only good thing in the sense for me is that. They had to drive a little ways. It wasn't next door because they would probably be there all the time. And um, this is what what is about, I think, on, on Saturday. On, on Sunday, right? Saturday and Sunday, yeah. 10 a.m. Mm. I mm. mean, please note the start time is 10 a.m. We mm. we have a lot of do a lot of work to do in the mornings. <laughs> so no early birds, no rattling the gate at 8.30, 9 o'clock saying, I have to get to the grocery store. Uh, <laughs> we're opening at 10 a.m. <laughs> uh, no exceptions. And we close at 4.30 Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um Although our rates have changed the Botanic Park, it's $10 CI for mm -hmm. adults and children three and over are only five CI. So it's it's really economical. It's not just a sale. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a beautiful display on the back of the visitor center of orchids. Um, we've got Dexter Bodden. He's going to be jamming uh, Saturday and Sunday um, yeah. from around 11 to 3 each day. We've got food. Um, we've got the children's garden, but we also have the entire botanic park to enjoy. So it's not just a one-stop shop for orchids. It's a it's a great weekend out for the whole community. All right. So it's ten dollars for the adults to get in. Ten dollars. Okay. So we're gonna offer up if Susan approves a ten. Uh, talk to the special. One <laughs> adult, ten bucks. One adult, ten bucks special. Ten adults is a hundred bucks. Okay. Good deal. But if you bring a group of fifty or more, very 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 special. It's a thousand bucks. That's even a better deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and listen, just tell you want to. And if, Sterling's going to deliver the money. Yeah, it's a fifty, <laughs> you know, fifty group special, and you should be a thousand bucks. <laughs> uh, it's a good deal for you. Trust me, it's government accounting. Good stuff. I'm on it. <laughs> no, I, I'm not trying to be just jovial, but it's something that if you have not gone, I mean, I recall days ago and having to unpack that particular car to mm -hmm. load in the you know, the orchids. And then to put them back in at the end of the day, because for many people, they're not bringing to sell, they bring into display, they're not bringing to win and, and be judged, they bring in to showcase, exactly. And celebrate. Exactly. Can I put it that way? Sure, I'll <laughs> take it. I'll take it. It's good fun, man. Yeah, it's a great weekend. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a it's a fixture on the calendar. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for well since the park started in 1994. So. Mm -hmm. You know, nearly 30 years. Miss Joyce Hilton, Miss mm -hmm. Kirky, Mr. Frank Rolston, Miss um, Miss Karen Hunter. You know, mm -hmm. many more I, I haven't mentioned and forgotten. Probably, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but um, you know, uh, we've been there together from the beginning. And orchids, the Cayman Islands, our national flower, the Botanic Park, we're all together. And um, this is the weekend to come visit. I mean, not just for the orchids, but the Botanic Park. And I. I want to make sure I'm not mistaken, but for some reason over the years, there were, it seemed that some orchids that never bloomed the entire year all of a sudden made an appearance that weekend. Yeah, that's one thing that we can't control is the weather. <laughs> um, and this year we've had, I mean, yesterday we had about three and a half hours of rain mm. at the Botanic Park in March, which is unheard of. It didn't rain in town. Mm -hmm. um, we're grateful for the rain. Um, we've had a, a cool um wet dry season at the botanic park anyways so yeah. things are blooming differently uh things change um things are beyond our control and uh, we got to roll with it is that what any of you who know 
would refer to as a microclimate in a sense? Or no, that's something different. I don't think it's a right microclimate, but I mean, the Botanic yeah. Park being in the middle of the island is mm -hmm. is on its own. Uh, we have very little development around us, um, which allows us, we're not really affected by a lot mm -hmm. of things that may be in the commercially developed areas, but um, weather's changing throughout the world. That's a reality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is why I think maybe coming out and, and seeing it, for me, it's better than watching something in a museum or a documentary or, you know, uh, thumb and show some magazine. There's a living, breathing thing. Chances are the person who brought it is somebody you know. You get to appreciate it and maybe inspired to, if not, do something for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of orchids, I mean, the one we have in front of us is uh, is probably the most most commonly sold orchid mm -hmm. in the world. It's a type of Phalaenopsis hot hybrid. Um, most people over care for their orchids, <laughs> um, which makes great for sales because um, people don't have the patience for it to flower again. It typically flowers once a year. It, um, mm -hmm. You don't want to put it in bright light. Uh, you want to leave it in a spot and, and, and let it be um, and water it sparsely. Mm -hmm. But again, it's very specific to the, the type of orchid that you purchase. But the one in front of us is the most common. Um, most people, you know, this this can bloom for two, three months. Mm -hmm. um, you put it in not a direct direct light, and and almost ignore it. You know, give a little bit of water, and let it let it do a thing, and yes, it's going to finish blooming, but it'll be back again if you have the patience. Yeah. Now, if the the flowers will come and go, mm -hmm. but the leaves should stay. The leaves should stay. So if and the leaves start to go, we, we got a problem. If the leaves start to go, Sterling switch to something else. <laughs> 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 no, and, and I don't say that as a joke because I I know some people. I won't I won't anyway say anything more about them because one way or another they gonna say, "Boy, stop talking about me." But they go into their their little, you know, I call it their greenhouse. They got different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they even call it a nursery. I mm -hmm. thought what's a nursery that's, that's where I go to care for these people that need a little bit extra help <laughs> and they're in there all hours yeah. and they're they're attentive yeah. and they're nursing mm -hmm. these things and they're talking and they're cleaning and uh, I'm thinking is that a Q-tip that you have there <laughs> wiping <laughs> it's not true I mean, they do all yeah, sorts of things I mean um, plant people are, are fanatics <laughs> I'm one of them but you know some people have a, a special way of dealing with something whether yeah. it's involved you know Cleaning a a scale with with a Q-tip soaked in alcohol, that's, yep. you know, it's a great way of dealing with it. So you don't <coughs> have to use chemicals, but mm -hmm. you know, orchids are living, breathing. They're like they're like us. Um, they need mm -hmm. a break during dry season. They want to have a break too. Um, and, and seasonal change affects the blooms of everything, whether yeah. it's mangoes or orchids or crops. Um, everything is affected by what we give it. Now, as we're looking at orchids and the orchid you know, show is this weekend at the park, and I get you to remind us, you know, admission and timing, but we can either have the orchid inside our houses mm -hmm. or we can have the orchid outside somewhere on the porch or elsewhere. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, these these are, are typically, um, I mean, I grow these outside, but they're in, in shaded areas, but mm -hmm. most of our Caribbean and Western Caribbean orchids are the toughest orchids in the world because we go through dry season. And mm -hmm. they've they've evolved to survive, mm -hmm. and uh, they may may look rough and tattered for a couple of weeks, but then when the rains come, they come back to life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, dry seasons induce flowering of some plants, orchids and trees, and then rainy seasons induce a different group of plants to flower and and sh strut their stuff. So, depending on what you have, um, they have specific requirements. We've got lots of volunteers and experts there to answer questions. We've mm -hmm. got blooming orchids, non-blooming orchids for the collectors. We've got orchids for the everybody who wants to just have a beautiful flower in their office or in their you know dining room table for a few months. Um, we've got it all covered this weekend. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up our discussion, you shared that they're quite easy to take care of. But for some of us, there's a perception that these are delicate and you know you need to hire a specialist team. Yeah, they're 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 quite you know the orchids are very interesting. Um, there's quite of an allure about them that's been developed from the beginning of plant collecting. But um, mm -hmm. they are quite tough plants. Um, they travel well. They they've gone miles, thousands of miles on a boat when they originally were collected and brought back to England or wherever. Um, but they're 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 quite 
they're quite tough plants. Mm-hmm. Uh, some need a lot more care, some don't. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it's pretty easy to look after if you do your research and, you know, talk to your friends here who have yeah. experience in growing them here. And that's the beautiful thing, you know, you and you, you know, others out there, Botanic Park, but through the Orchid Society and, and other sort of, in my view, you know, very knowledgeable individuals, they're willing to share the information. Most they, definitely. They, you know, they Most understand. Definitely. Can I then ask, as part of Orchid Care 101, you know, I love when the orchid is inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, the challenge I've had, I'll go and I'll buy an orchid and I'll bring it inside, and in short order, the leaves and everything are gone. I left mm-hmm. with a stalk. <laughs> and that's only the piece that <laughs> can't rot because that's what was what orchid was attached to. <laughs> what am I doing wrong, man? You, you probably have it. Uh, if it's one of these plants mm-hmm. in front of us, a phonopsis, it is probably in too much sunlight. Okay. Um, uh, the wider the leaves, is a, it's a very broad generalization. The mm. wider the leaves mm. typically mean the less direct sun they can handle. So w- there's orchids that grow in full sun. In fact, most of our orchids can handle full sun. Our banana orchid and many orchids can handle that. But a very broad generalization is something that has a phalaenopsis, which is a, a leaf that has three to four inches of leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it likes bright light, but it doesn't like direct light. Okay. And then once you see the leaves responding and the roots are happy, that you want to have green tips on the end of the roots, okay. you know the plant's happy. Um, it'll bloom again. But right. don't move it all over the house to look for a different spot. Uh, once it once it finds its its bearings and once it finds a happy spot, just be patient. And that's something that we all wish we had more of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about orchids still. <laughs> yeah, and life. <laughs> <laughs> so j- just, uh, you know, uh, the final point now, because I think... Many of us appreciate having more greenery inside. It's, it's good for the indoor air quality. It's actually therapeutic just to look at. Of course. Um, I'm thinking of my limited endeavors. You know, I go to the, I purchase it, or it's a gift. I get it, and I plop it down here in that spot because that's mm-hmm. where I want it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't it doesn't take, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering now, is it that I need to gradually get it acclimated? like you do with our wood floors before installation? Is it that I've taken sure. it from outside and I plopped it into this air-conditioned space? I mean, w- well, I mean, I can I can answer that mm-hmm. um, in, a, in an interesting way. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of indoor plants okay. because you're, you're putting a plant that typically likes to have humidity and likes to have mm-hmm. a different environment, and you're trying to make it live in our air-conditioned house, and our air-conditioned mm-hmm. house wants to pull the moisture out of our air and... Mm-hmm. and and bring cool air and make us comfortable. So uh, mm-hmm. indoor plants and plants in pots typically need a little more care than if they were in their natural environment. Okay. Uh, my wife looks after the indoor plants, and I deal with everything outside. <laughs> you know what? You have more time, I get us both in trouble. <laughs> 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 my goal, you know, and your mission, should you choose to accept it, in short order, I'm going to find, I have this, this desire for in the bathroom, right, mm-hmm. for an orchid to be placed in a certain spot. Okay. Uh, have not been successful just yet. Okay. So that is the goal. It, it was a, in a magazine picture I saw uh, very early in, in my life. And I thought, that is absolute. No, I recognize it was curated. It was a picture. It's probably yeah. was a fake orchid. <laughs> but it has left an indelible impression on me, and that's what I want. All right. I'm on it. You on it? I'm on it. All right. Send me uh, the picture. <laughs> 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 all right, John. So, the invitation as we close it out this this Saturday, all right. 10 a.m. No early birds, please. Mm-hmm. No rattling the gate. Um, <laughs> Ten dollars CI for adults. Yeah, okay. Five dollars for children. Um, orchids on display at the back of the visitor center. We got great food. Mm. We got great music with Mr. Dexter Bodden, and the orchid sale will be in the children's garden, Rotary Schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. So um, if you want to come shop for an orchid and let your kids run around in the mm-hmm. children's garden, it's a two-stop shop. Uh, we got food. We've got a great weekend. Mm-hmm. It benefits the Botanic Park. It benefits the entire community. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've, we've been doing it forever. So uh, I hope to see everybody out. No, my no. And um, all, you know, and just earlier, uh, come and pay 10 make a contribution of an extra 10. Yeah. It's money well invested. And yeah. to you and the team, um, both within Orchid Society and their volunteers, but to your staff, phenomenal job at the Botanic Park. Great. Thank um, you. You know, thank you very much. Because this is about not just the preservation, it's about the presentation. And for those of us who, like me who you know, will enjoy it, 
mm-hmm. but would be more content with digging a hole as opposed to trying to take care of the plant. I know. hear you. Yeah. Hey, that's my exercise. I hear you. <laughs> All right. And uh, I, I guess talking with you, I see you every year buying new orchids since you're not having good luck. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Great customer. <laughs> I, I, I'll now take into, listen, you buy it, okay, and I'll reimburse you <laughs> because even that might be, you know how some people have that, that mindset that, you know, they're the jinx for why the plant's not working, right? Exactly. But orchids are, they're resilient, they're beautiful, and, and there's something spectacular about them, almost myst- mystical. Yeah, and uh, this orchid here on the table, you guys are going to have to fight for. I'm personally giving this to the staff at Radio Cayman to see who buys, you know, you know, the colleagues the best lunch um, yeah. Friday can take this home with them this weekend, and then see you at the at the orchid show to buy plenty more <laughs> Just to replace this one. <laughs> kind of like you know, as we close, I'm thinking, you know, you know our, our children or even us sometimes in the classroom would have a pet, and you take it home, you care for it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, may I suggest that a few of us that really came on don't touch this orchid. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first one to volunteer. I'll look at it and observe it. Norma, don't touch the orchid. <laughs> Leave it to Paulette and Ray. <laughs> well, listen, where it is right now, it's going to be blooming for a couple of weeks. If, if, they, if you ignore it. If you ignore it. So don't maybe, touch it. Yeah. At what point do we care for it? Maybe next week, give it a little drink. Okay. Um, and then, And then when the... <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't it, know. And then when it stops blooming, just give it back to me and I'll put it in my garden. You'll fix it up. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that, you know. That's kind of what we should do with people. It's like a rental. <laughs> <laughs> Grandchildren, take them back. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but, but this is the fun and this is where we learn and this is where you know, we get to laugh. And, and, and thanks very much. And yeah. I hope people 10 a.m. on Saturday uh, come out and leave, not just with plants and tour, but with a great appreciation you know, for where we are. So yeah. thanks, John. And for what we have. I mean, the Botanic yeah. Park is uh, is an incredibly important part of the Cayman Islands. All right. Well, I'm going to do my best to remind the listeners to accept the invitation to come out on the weekend. Uh, as tomorrow approaches, c- quick reminder, Ms. Shakina Bush will come on at uh, midday at the first part of the show, talk about a you know, wonderful opportunity as we speak to Jubilate. Uh, 1 to 2 p.m., Michael Miles will come on and we talk about crime and criminality and you know our young people and, and the like and then at two o'clock uh, the rcips uh, and their top brass will be here great and then at three o'clock susan and i will be surfing somewhere and pushing orchids <laughs> more than like that's what i'll be doing getting ready for the opening huh? awesome all right thank you all very much for this opportunity guide me as we pray together as a nation we'll be truly truly blessed until tomorrow thank you very much radio Cayman. Talk Today is brought to you by Subway. Open 24 hours in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel, Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctors Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctors Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949-6066.